Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce uh, Dr. Manjula Shroff here, and that was Maya, uh, India's first teacher, mentor, influencer, uh, AI avatar, and clone of Dr. Shroff for the cause of education. Ma'am, uh, you have been uh, doing a lot of UN sessions uh, in the last one year. You did about four of them: Dubai, uh, Australia, right, and uh, Brazil. You did the G20. And just before these sessions, you had done the first book, which was uh, Baby Steps to Big Dreams. Yeah. This was launched by the president of Mauritius. Then you went on to the uh, different uh, United Nations summits to talk about uh, sustainability in education. Along with that, it seems so likely that you've been writing this book. Because just within a matter of a time of a year, you came up with this beautiful book called Safe Teen Steps. This book is about the safety of teenagers in the internet world. First thing first, as an educationalist, as a person working towards policies like what Mr. Francis does here, uh, why do you think is a need of a book of this kind, of safety of teenagers in the internet world? I have three books here. I don't know what, which one to start with and which one gets more prominence. So let me quickly start with this. The country gave to us an NEP, which is like a 600 page document. It's very hard for every teacher in the classroom to decipher what is to be done. But the reality is, if you don't do it, nobody else can. So this is, you know, we put in a, in a room like this about 50 odd, 100 odd, odd uh, principals and academicians and senior people to tell us what is the minimum standards that K-12 needs to do and put it in an abridged version like this so that if you pick it up, and you do just this, you're NEP compliant. But you know, NEP covers the entire gamut of all things good. The previous panel spoke so beautifully about fear. The importance of building fearless, courageous citizens. This book, and we're going to dwell a lot more into it, covers like... 36 kinds of fears that just a simple conversation in the classroom can deal with. Because you and me both know that teaching is psychological. Learning is age-specific. So are fears. So this book, through the ages of children, it starts from the womb and goes right up to teenage talks about how you deal with fears, apart from a lot, many more topics. But while we were touring India, talking about parenting, the need, why a teacher should behave like a parent and, you know, AI and all of that, this became so relevant. Creating safe teens. Today, the children, not only dying because of gaming, Children have no moral values. They do not know appropriate from inappropriate. I will start with the bouncer and give it to you, Anantha Krishnan. Two days ago in Ahmedabad Metro, and you're all educationists, so I'm going to just sit here, talk openly, which I've learned to do in the past three years. Two years ago in Ahmedabad Metro, a youth was caught on camera masturbating. And since I talk about Safe teens, I was asked to quote. What quote can I give? Who will I hold responsible? As society, we have to ask ourselves this question. As an adult, have I taught a youth what is appropriate and what is un inappropriate? Have we taught that anywhere? We're so busy doing two plus two. If we are not doing it, if parents are not doing it, if teachers are not doing it, if adults are not doing it, they're going online and searching solutions. And this is what they see, and so this is what they do. And then you'll say you're at fault for something that you never taught them? How does that work? Fantastic, ma'am. Fantastic. I have uh, incidents which has just been reported on people. I'll come to that. But before that, I need to take one question to you. This book deals a lot on uh, taboo topics, topics which normally a child is not spoken to with. Parents don't feel it appropriate. Teachers are not comfortable talking to it, to, to them with, with. 
topics like scarlet letters, scoping, scoping, topics like sexting, sextortion, uh, blackmailing, internet blackmailing, right? Uh, grooming issues. So there are so many words of such kind, right? Uh, scary, of course, from the English connotation. But what are these words? How do they affect teenagers today? And how do they get influenced with these, these stuff? And what does this book cover them? So this book talks about, the NEP has a chapter on emotional strength. But what do we do about it? How do you deal with emotional quotient? In teenage, if we don't deal with the real problems that the kids are going through, how will they perform academically? If a child is growing through an online breakup and 50% of children are having relationships and they are at some point needing that kind of solution and you're stuffing down their throat mathematics and science, how will they perform? Let me take one each word and this book beautifully explains everything. I have to tell you that I am no authority on online. Before 18 months, I didn't know these terms myself. It is thanks to my co-author, who's a Times of India journalist and has been writing on student edition for 17 years that I got, I started to understand. And of course, as I researched, I began to be more educated. Let's take each word. Scarlet letter. You want to start with scarlet letter? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So, you know, society changes, but human values, human thoughts remain the same. Scarlet Letter, you can go Google it, is a movie about a certain period in time where adultery was a crime. Today, you don't know what is adultery, what is real. So, let's not go there. But adultery was a crime. And if a woman committed adultery, even more serious, right? So, there was this woman called Scarlet who unfortunately created this heinous crime of adultery. So, her penalty was, her punishment was, she had to, every time she stepped out of the home, she had to wear a letter A standing for adultery. Now, society punishes inappropriate behavior. Today, things go viral. It's just a different way. But the, the methods have changed. The value is the same. Let's talk about sexting. The word sexting, as you know, is texting with a sexual connotation. In India, it is an IPC act. It's a criminal offense. Any guesses what percentage of children are indulging in sexting? Teenagers? Any guesses? Statistics says over 70%. And this is not your classrooms, even rural India. Because teenage is all about hormones. It doesn't stay with Bombay or New York. Her mein, every teenager is driven by hormones which they see amplified online. So sexting happens all the time. He used other words like catfishing, online grooming. And let me explain those terms. Uh, before, you, before, before you go there, you said that uh, so many children are already you know, exposed to such kind of uh, you know, things online. There has to be a differentiation between Internet and social media, which unfortunately this country doesn't uh, understand. One. Two, if you had seen yesterday's news in Patrika, it's a Hindi newspaper, and of course, the e news too. Uh, there's a news in, uh, very saddening though, uh, it's a news in uh, Madhya Pradesh, a uh, district called Sagar, which you all know. A child of class 11, a girl child, has delivered a baby in the classroom. What is the society going to? What are we doing actually? And how is this happening? How should we prevent it? Because whatever is happening is not happening right. How do you prevent it? So these are questions which crop up where education of such kind is very important. And how do we go about it? 
when I was talking to one of the ministers in Bangalore, he said that yehi to padhana chahiye. Ham log kar kya rahe? But we can't do it. We have syllabus to complete. We have 40 hours a week. All that nonsense that goes on in classrooms. But when Australia banned social media, you know, 50% of Indian population thinks it's wrong. Most teachers think it's wrong. Because of this confusion of internet versus social media. Bohat farak hai. You use the internet, you use LAN, VAN, all of that for digital learning. We are talking about the ill effects of social media. I think Australia has got it really right. Delayed exposure to social media is the answer. Because it's messing with children's growth. Now, this, what he said is so unfortunate. But you know, if when you go to the internet, they will celebrate in a way teenage unwed pregnancy. Let me give you an example. Justin Bieber, how many people know who's Justin Bieber? Don't tell me you don't know. <laughs> you have to know, right? He is the largest pop star of the world, perhaps, at least in America. His mother was a teenage unwed pregnancy. Steve Jobs celebrated stories of teenage unwed pregnancy. They are celebrated today when Steve Jobs became Steve Jobs, when Justin Bieber became Justin Bieber. Think of what the mother has gone through. Think of what this girl who gave birth to that child in 11th grade, think of her future. She may have seen Justin Bieber's story and thought that it's a great thing. Who will teach this? We don't have time. We need to partner with parents. It is time that education stopped thinking they have all the solutions. You do not. You don't even have the time. You have to partner with parents. It is critical that parents have these conversations at home. Huge identity crisis that the online world creates for youngsters. Particularly, there's a huge amount of uh, gaga on gaming, online relationships, cyber sex, and leading to cyber crime, cyber faults, cyber defaults, many other stuff. But here, the next two minutes, if we can kindly concentrate particularly on identity crisis and why is it even more uh, dangerous than drug usage? See, why we've begun to see that it is about identity crisis is this. And let me try and see how I can illustrate it. Everybody understands realomania, right? Reels. See, I, I was told by the teachers that children have forgotten that books open like this. They are trying to do this even to physical textbooks. That's the extent of our understanding of reels. You have to understand what has happened with the reels. When TikTok ban got banned, TikTok began the understanding of Reels. Short 60 second attention span. The platform is designed to hook you. So it's 60 seconds, A. B, it's what they call infinity scroll. Ab sirf itna karoge na? Teen ghante nikal jayenge. You have no clue how much rubbish you put into your brain. You won't even remember what you've done. But teen ghante nikal jate hain. Bade aram se. The other thing is, it's called auto scroll. Ab ye nahi bhi karoge, next one will start. See, platform is designed to hook you. If you as adults are getting hooked, think about teenagers. You may have better feed. They have only pornography. Hormones are calling. Now, all the time when they're looking at pornography, and they're able to do sexting. Imagine that you're able to comment on a private part of the opposite sex. You can do it 50 times a day if you want. Offline, if you did it, your teachers, your adults would create such a big drama. 
they don't get it they don't get why it's wrong online nobody stops them it really creates a confusion remember that it's a young brain not even fully formed you know this right psychologists used to say that by age 6 90% of our brain is formed and that's why it's a very important milestone there's a revision to that after age 6 the now talking age 13 because just the embarkment of teens is so critical at that time if all they are seeing is pornography and adult stuff that's all they indulging in but try doing it offline it's wrong it really con- creates confusions in the minds i'm told ma'am there's a world called okay before i ask i don't ask it how many people here are instagram lovely 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 a lot of us right now how many people are on uh, finsta vijesh don't raise your hand i know you <laughs> <laughs> how many people are on finsta mukesh are you on finsta uh it's <laughs> all right we'll come to that how many people are here on rinsta r i n rinsta and uh, what did i miss ha sinsta how many people are on sinsta s s for singapore sinsta ma'am what are these words how do they cause a problem to teenagers and how can we go about it i want to link it with the relomania remember identity crisis i want to say that so let me first explain the terminologies to start one insta account you need one valid email id that's the starting point that's what we call the rinsta the real insta account almost every teenager of course has an insta account and snapchat and all of that i'm just taking insta as an account uh, as an example they have multiple finsta accounts fake insta accounts those of you who want to watch like rajesh is you have to create a finsta account i have a finsta account after i learned all this i started creating finsta accounts because i could watch what is going on multiple finsta accounts not one it is in these multiple finsta accounts all this sexting cyber sex nudity pornography goes on with the false belief that they can't be caught but you know what if they ever get into trouble online there's always footprints it will trace back na to your real insta account we need to teach our children this we need to tell them sexting is an in, is a ipc crime we you need to tell them parents can't parents ko hawa hi nahi hai you see children are native to digital we are immigrants unko sab pata hota hai the last one sinsta secret account dark web badi achhi tarah se aati hai bachcho ko sikhane ki zarurat hi nahi padti they can just navigate we had an incident in amdabad on dark web where a child was posting to the school material on teacher nudity of their own school and saying that if you if you conduct the exams i will make these pictures viral and they were unable to trace neither the police nor the cyber crime people were unable to trace because it was coming from the dark web 11th grader nobody talked to him clearly so what are we doing teaching to and to ya when life is being lost here if a child is indulging in sexting or cyber sex or being blackmailed sextortion somebody is blackmailing hota rehta hai ye sab how will they pay attention in your class so where should we actually focus fantastic i don't think i would be able to take one more question otherwise uh, krishna is going to show me a hand from behind uh, for those of us all senior educators here you understand what's happening in today's world and what is our role going ahead so it's important that we reach out to the parents to the maximum and it's not easy for a school to do a talk of this kind 
so we are happy to come down to your school talk to your parents talk to your teachers talk to your students also all complimentary of course with the only motive of making india a wish for guru back in education that's the only motive towards that initiative ma'am has been kind enough to bring a few copies of the books uh, they will be available here you can take it up my colleague is here they'll be will be giving it to you and this is a fantastic book on uh, nep which has been curated by a set of 150 teachers across and it's been now widely accepted by even the government guys right who seek a lot of uh, benefit using this book so this book is available in the ecal section in the front uh, uh, stall right i think uh, my colleagues are there also uh, mukesh can you can be raise your hand yeah so mukesh is there so the first section in the lobby so please go and take your complimentary uh, copies of these bo- the, the nep book from there and for those of us who can uh, help us further in bringing these books in different languages of the country we'll be more than happy to associate with you and the easiest way to implement this book is your teachers we we'll send books to your library also complimentary again your teachers can read them out to your children in the zero hours period right any other form of reach out that you want us to do we are more than happy to collaborate thank you ladies and gentlemen for being here thank you much Thank you.